Hi again then guys and welcome to an episode of a series that we haven't looked at in quite a while now, probably a couple of months perhaps, at least as long as we've been doing the livery competition, because of course the livery competition here on the channel on Sunday afternoons replaced this series which used to be on Sunday afternoons but now it's going to be a looser layout that can just pop up here or there which I think is kind of better anyway. It stops it from being stale, it makes it more interesting, it could be more of a surprise as it is today. And that is Rivals, a series which is very long-standing on the channel, mostly in Gran Turismo 6, and that's kind of the reason why I put it on hiatus for a little while, because with the limited car list of GT Sport, there just aren't as many rivalries that you can keep going back to, because if we, for instance, put the Corvette and the Viper up against each other already, well, yes, you could legitimately put the new Ford GT in the mix as well, but does that really justify an entirely new episode? Well, to some degree, you could probably make a case to say yes, and I wouldn't necessarily disagree with that. I just don't want you guys to feel like I'm just recycling the same episode and adding one or two cars to it. I want it to be something new and fresh and more unique to justify an entire episode of Rivals. So that is the occasion here. Three cars that we have not put in Rivals matches before, and three which definitely deserve it. Because, of course, this is the K-Car Showdown of Gran Turismo Sport, at least for now. And I would not be at all surprised if they bring more K-Cars back. I think that one of the cars which has a pretty good chance of returning actually would be the Mazda Autozam. I do strongly think that that car is going to return, partially because of how good it already looked in Gran Turismo 6. But here's hoping. I know a lot of you guys want to see that car back. But for this particular rivalry, we're looking at, of course, two Hondas and a Daihatsu. The Daihatsu Copen, which I, on a slight tangent, was really pleased to see the love for, which I didn't expect here on the community on the channel, because, as I've said, it's one of my lesser favourite Daihatsus. I still have respect for it, but it was very cool to see the love that a lot of you guys had, and that shouldn't surprise me, given that we talk about stuff like that, appreciating K-Cars, quite a bit on the channel. So, that's very cool to see. It's definitely the odd one out, though, of the three, and not just because it's not a Honda. The other two are polar opposites, really. You've got the Beat, which is a very old-school, specialised K-car and a legend within the category, and you've got the S660, the absolute brand newcomer to the category. So, how do they compare? They are different, they are similar. So, which one comes out on top in terms of lap times, which one comes out on top on paper, at least for the fun of it, and which one is kind of the best of the three, at least in a fun way? Well, let's find out. Now, first of all, we have the odd one out, the Daihatsu Copen. As I've said, not a huge fan favourite for me personally, but very cool to see that a lot of you do like this one quite a bit. I often refer to it as the Jelly Bean, and it's the odd one out for a number of reasons, not just because it's a Daihatsu compared to two Hondas, but because, of course, it's also the most unique drivetrain of the three cars. Front engine, front wheel drive, whereas both of the others are, of course, mid-engine rear wheel drive a much more traditional sports car layout, whereas this one, it's more the kind of layout that you'd presume a K-car would have. It's a hatchback kind of layout. But don't let the Daihatsu badge, and don't let the front wheel drive, and don't let the cute appearance fool you. The Copen is a really good little car, and in fact, I recently, as recently as yesterday in fact, at least at the time of releasing this video, used the Copen to win a number of events in career mode, such as the K-Car events, some of the N100 level events, and it was really good for that. I even beat some, say, N300 Ford Focus STs with it in N100. So it definitely has a ton of potential that wasn't even on racing tyres. So it's a deceptively good little car, and I would say that that's the strongest thing in the Daihatsu's arsenal that the other two do not have. It is a sleeper, whereas the other two, they are eye-catching, they're more interesting looking, they are more, not necessarily threatening, but they do look like sports cars, albeit very small ones, whereas the Daihatsu looks very cute. It's like a Beetle convertible or a Mini convertible. It's very unassuming. And as far as downsides, it doesn't really have any huge ones because within its own category and in its own way, it's not really trying to be the best thing out there. So whatever performance you get out of it is kind of a bonus. 
and so in its own little way I would say that it's actually a really good K car. It does a lot with a little, it doesn't weigh all that much, it's got a relatively modest amount of power, as I said it's still in N100 even fully tuned, and it's cheap, it's only a 15 grand car, so you can't really go wrong in its own little kind of way. What then about arguably the most legendary of the three, the Honda Beat? Well, the Honda Beat is, at least as far as I'm concerned, the most specialised of the three, because although the S660 you could say is specialty as well, in as much as being a sports car within the K-Car class, it doesn't feel as special to me. It doesn't feel like that icon that the Beat is. The Beat is up there with stuff like the Autozam and the Cappuccino, these really specialised, true small sports cars of the K-Car category, whereas well, my feelings are out there as far as the S660 goes, and incidentally, if you would like to hear much more in-depth reviews of all three cars on their own, I have covered all three in individual reviews as well. Now, as far as the beat goes in terms of its performance and its driving style, well, just like the Daihatsu, it is stuck in N100. Even when you tune it, you're looking at a maximum of 138 horsepower, which incidentally is the lowest of the three. However, it's the lightest of the three by a good 60 kilos. That's a really good advantage to have. Unfortunately though, at least in a competition sense, the Beat is way too fun for its own good. It's extremely tail happy, it loves to drift, and although that's all well and good if you're just trying to have fun basically, it definitely requires more focus and more of a tuning approach that brings it deliberately under control, whereas to some degree with the Daihatsu you can just kind of shove a tune on there and go, and with the S660 you don't need to tune it that much at all, it's kind of just good for what it is anyway. With the Honda Beat you definitely do need to tune it if you want it to take corners without just being sideways all the time. It's great, as I said, it's very fun, it'll put a smile on your face, but for winning races you need to actually get its backside in gear and get to the front of the pack, and when you're sideways you can't do that. So that's definitely its downside, which is kind of ironic, given that that's what makes it so fun. On the upside though, it is a dependable little sports car in N100 when you do bring it under control. As you can see in the video, you can still get a decent enough lap out of it, especially for N100. And although, kind of ironically, it was the slowest of the three cars, yes, slower than the Daihatsu, at least for me, although not by much, it definitely still has potential, and the fact that it is so close to the Daihatsu in terms of lap time shows that of course they're both very well matched in N100. What then about the odd one out in a different way? Not only the newest of the three, but also the only of the three that can go to N200. And of course that car in question is the newest of the three, the Honda S660. Now I've put my thoughts out there as far as this car goes in its individual review. I'm not a huge fan of it, not because it's bad in any particular way. In fact, surprise surprise, it was the fastest of these three cars by about four seconds. So that's no small task. However, you could also argue, well, it's in N200 fully tuned, so it should be faster. Yes and no. Yes, you are correct in thinking that, but at the same time, it doesn't actually have that much more power than the others do anyway. In fact, to be technical, it's got one horsepower more than the Daihatsu, but that one horsepower, for this car at least, is enough to bump it into that other class, which seems a little bit unfair. It's kind of a shame, but of course you could just tune it a little bit lower, and it would still be almost as quick as that in N100. So if you think of it that way, to be four seconds quicker under those circumstances is actually a really big deal. So regardless of my personal feelings, it is the fastest of the three, that's a fact. It's the fastest by a lot as well. Because even though in anything but the automotive world, four seconds seems like a completely insignificant amount of time, that's a massive difference between the cars. And of course that's over one lap. So over the course of five, six, 10, 20 laps, that's a huge difference for a car which you can also run in N100. So from that point of view, I would definitely say that the S660 is the most dependable of the three for racing. There's no question there. But I still have the same issues with it. Is it the fastest? Yes. And I alluded to that in my review of it. I said back then I believe that I thought it was probably the fastest because I hadn't actually tested it. Now that was correct but I still stand by what I said. I don't find it to have as much passion or as much character as either of the other two. The Daihatsu's got this deceptive charm when it's actually a little bruiser and the Honda Beat is just barrels of fun. To me, this one's just 
it's, it just is. It's not anything in particular. It doesn't feel like it has its own attitude or its own personality. It's just a small sports car. That's not bad, but for me it's not enough, because K cars are all about that character. So, on paper, which one is best? Because around the track, the S660 is. But as we all know, well, anyone at least who follows this series, it doesn't always pan out that way as far as the numbers go. So, let's find out. Well, spoiler alert, it doesn't pan out that way because once again the specs on paper are completely different to how the lap times would have you believe it would go, basically. So first of all, as far as price, the Honda Beat has the advantage. Just under 14 grand, then 15 grand for the Daihatsu, just under 20 for the Honda. Thankfully though, despite the decent enough range of prices, they're all very affordable. You can buy all three for less than like uh, GTR for instance. Although, you might want to buy a GTR instead, honestly. But, in terms of class, of course the S660 has the advantage, because it's the only one of the three that can be used in two classes. The other two are only N100, that can go up to N200. However, I would say be careful in N200, because of course being faster than these two sounds good, but it's not really saying much. An N200 car beating two N100s doesn't... it's not really much to boast about. You put it up against something that's on the higher end of the N200 spectrum, like an Alfa Romeo 4C, well, you might see some differences there. However, the point does go to the S660 purely for its range. As far as the engine capacity, well of course, biggest is not best when it comes to engine size, but as I've said before, we use Top Trump's rules just for the sake of it, so the bigger engine gets the point. However, on this occasion of course being K cars, there's not much between them. The winning car only wins by 1cc, and you might be surprised, because it's the Daihatsu that wins, a 659 to the 658 of the S660, and then the 656 of the Honda Beat. As far as power, of course, if it's the only car that can go into N200, it's pretty obvious that that S660 would once again be the most powerful, but again, by only one over the Daihatsu. So again, don't sleep on that Daihatsu. It's a sleeper in its own way. As far as torque, speaking of being a sleeper, the Daihatsu is the best. It's got loads of torque compared to the other two, 190 pound feet to the 181 of the S660 and the tiny 96 of the Honda Beat. Can you feel the torque in the Daihatsu? Well, not necessarily, but it's cool that it has that much anyway, and it's always been a car like that. It's always been very torquey when you do tune it up. As far as weight, well, I mentioned earlier, of course, the Honda Beat is around 60-ish kilos lighter than the other two. All of them are in the 7 to 800 kilo region, but 706 is really good for the Honda Beat. Although, of course, they're lightweight. They're K-cars, that's the whole point. As far as horsepower per tonne, ironically, given that it's the least powerful of the three, that 60 kilo weight advantage is enough to give the Honda the highest horsepower per tonne of 195, which barely beats out the other two. So again, very, very well matched across the board. Now, although we're not counting the lap time, it is to be noted that both the Beat and the Copen did a 209.4, as you saw from the footage, whereas of course the clear winner in terms of actual racing is the S660 with a 205.2. A lot quicker, around four seconds, or actually over four seconds. On paper though, as is not too surprising at this point, the winner is the slowest. <laughs> the Honda Beat has three points. It is of course the cheapest, the lightest, and has the highest horsepower per ton, whereas the Copen and the S660 have two points apiece, the Daihatsu has the biggest engine and the most torque, whereas the S660 has the best class range and the highest power. So interesting how it breaks up, and it's not surprising at this point that the car with the most points was actually the slowest. So. If you're looking purely to race, go for the S660. If you're looking for pure fun, go for the Honda Beat. And if you're looking for something that's kind of in between, go for the Daihatsu. And I think the Daihatsu might be my favorite of these three, actually. So overall, that's it for this matchup. Of course, we will revisit the series in due time with another episode. And for now, as always, thanks for watching.